The guys on the Rodfather Good Guys Road Tour are the nicest, fun-loving guys you would ever want to meet. And not one of them looks like a menace to society. But back in the day, these guys were looked at like rebels. Being a hot rodder wasn't exactly acceptable to most people, but we wanted to talk to some of these guys and find out if the label was warranted. Cub Barnett, Andy Brizio's friend since 1959, has been cruising across America with Andy since 1970, and like many of the hot rodders of the past, has stories about being hassled for being a hot rodder. Andy's walking around behind us. Is he? Yeah, but what I wanted to ask was, you know, hot rodders are always considered to be the rebels, you know, back in the day. What, yeah. what do you think? Do you guys, do you think you two are a couple of rebels? I know, I don't think so, but I'll tell you, a few of the earlier trips we took, they did. They thought we were big rebels. Really? Oh boy, big time. Why? Well, one place we stopped one time, there was about seven cars, and I, I think it was in Missouri or Mississippi, I'm not sure. Anyway, go into like a Foster's freeze, we give the girl our order, and about that time a pickup truck pulls in the parking lot, 300 pound guy gets out carrying a shotgun and he says, where are you guys headed? He said, we're going to Memphis to the Nationals. He said, then I recommend you get on down the road. One of the guys that was with us happened to be a San Francisco cop. Yeah. So he showed the guy his credentials and the guy looked at him and he says, you're not in California. <laughs> and he put one in the chamber and says, get on down the road. <laughs> well, you weren't causing trouble that time, but I mean, back in the day, I mean, you're a drag racer, and we all know, but um, I mean, back in the day, did you guys tear it up and go get in trouble? <laughs> Come on, you can share, nobody's gonna know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we, would, we probably did our share of raising hell, yeah. yeah. A little street racing every once in a while? Oh yeah, oh yeah, especially out across the desert. Yeah. One year we got busted in Battle Mountain and they wrote uh, eight of us up for 97. He says, if I write you for what you're going, you're gonna go to jail. Because anything over 100 miles an hour, it's automatic jail. We didn't want to go to jail. And how long ago was that? When was that? Oh gosh. That was in the late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Wallace Jr., editor of Hot Rod Deluxe Magazine, grew up at San Fernando Dragway in the 50s and 60s. When we asked him about the rebel persona surrounding hot rodders, which made them only slightly more accepted than biker gangs, he had an interesting perspective. So these guys were the rebels, if you will. I mean, society didn't really like the kids that were cruising 32 Fords or 69 Camaros or any of that stuff. And you've been around this thing for way longer than your age would indicate. Um, what are some of the cool stories that we need to know? <laughs> well, you know, uh, 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 my wife, when she first came into the business about 10 years ago or somewhere, she saw like a SEMA show or some kind of trade show. And she said, everybody looks so normal. You know, she didn't expect that. And I said, you know, but then as she got to know the people a little bit, she said, everybody had a little extra twinkle in their eye. <laughs> that, that I said, you know, at, at best, everybody in this industry was a, uh, was a, a street racer. So you have a, a basis of, of juvenile delinquents that probably no other industry has. And the ones that survived, that didn't get killed, you know, in the 50s and 60s when they were young, went on to start businesses and become players in this whole world. But the entire industry is based on, on street racing and juvenile delinquents, really. It's just, when I first went to, my dad worked at San Fernando Drag Strip, and when my mom would bring us after church on Sunday, this is uh, like 57, 58, She'd, she'd tell us when we got to the track, she'd look and see all these guys and girls, and she'd say, children, lock your doors, just to, drop my, to drive through the pits and drop my dad off, because everybody looks so scary, you know? <laughs> and it's like, it's hard to imagine that, but the guys haven't changed. I think that's another thing about this business and this hobby. You're allowed to be a, a dumb teenager your whole life. You know, Phil and I, he told you a story, Phil Tester and I, who's with me on the trip, we came here in 66 in his 55 Chevy, and I feel, I have these little flashbacks as we're driving down the road that we're still, it's still 1966 and we're in the Midwest driving his 55 Chevy. I mean, we have the same clothes, the same, <laughs> yeah. 
pretty Same much hair. we have not evolved very much. That was a problem in my first marriage. You're not showing any growth. Yeah. Like, hey. This allows us to stay kids really as long until the end, you know? Rich Guasco, owner and driver of the Pure Hell Fuel Altered, embraced the rebel image back in the day. His only crime, his passion for loud, fast cars. Nowadays, hot rodding is still full of rebels. Clearly, yeah. we choose to drive these yes, instead of rebel right, cars. Right. Okay, but but back then, it, it was even more so. Yes. Uh, what was it about you guys, the 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 hot rodders that were shaping hot rodding yes. for all of us? Yes. What was it about you guys that made you hoodlums to the public? Well, probably just because we had fenderless cars that were loud. You know, my first, when I first built my Roadster, I built, I started it between the eighth grade and high school, and it was my high school car. And, I mean, it was a mess, <laughs> you know? And just driving it to town, the cops would stop me, not even doing it. Well, first of all, I drove it for like two or three years before I ever bothered to register it. So that really got them upset. And I never did have mufflers on it until I graduated high school. And, and we just, we street raced and we, did burnouts and we did around around things and you know was and and then my Rocha was actually my race car. Have you really slowed down? I try not to. How can you slow down when you're with 20 years old and 40 years old and everybody drives 80 miles an hour and you have to keep up, you know? Like I tried to do that burnout, but the thing didn't have enough cuts to do a burnout. <laughs> Which is pretty sad for a fuel altar yeah. driver, I it have was to the say. It was the altitude, it was the oh, altitude. Oh, that was it, yeah. yeah. No it power, the, it okay. Was the altitude. I'm gonna let it slide okay. this time, but I'm okay. expecting big things next time. Yeah.